So, I did a thing. Despite my resolution to stick to the knitting, quite literally, last month I signed up for an online art retreat called Radiant You. With this retreat, you got two links to two videos a day to different art activities for 10 days. And then I did another thing. I signed up for another retreat. This one was called Sketchbook Revival. The format was very similar. You got two videos a day, but this one went on for 14 days and the two sessions, the two series overlap. So yes, that's right, for a few days there. I was in fact getting four sessions per day and I kept up with them. And the result is in this book here. Do you want to take a look and see what I've done? I love the way this book ended up. It was a bit of a feat to figure out how to get it to work, but I'm pretty thrilled with how it turned out at the end. So the first session was called Radiant You. And this one, it turned out to be a lot more writing and self-discovery than art. And it wasn't really exactly what I was expecting. I thought it was going to be more art. And at some point, I came up with this idea to do these blind contour drawings off each of the presenters. This one is off Elizabeth Foley. She was the organizer for this particular retreat. The second one here, was this was Cat Z and she led a session that she called Cosmic Smash Booking and the idea was to take a, a standard journal and crumple, it up, crumple up all the pages. The curious thing is her particular blind contour drawing end up to, ended up being quite, quite sedate and which is interesting because she was really quite a flamboyant character so I'm not sure that it actually reflects her essence there. This next one uh, was uh, somebody named Jackie Holder and she led a session called Writing the Labyrinth and she had actually provided a template to write the labyrinth but I chose to make my own in my art journal but I've listed here the steps to create your own art journal and in this case I actually took some rice paper that was a sample for one of my art classes and I glued it over top of the writing so you've got some interesting colors and patterns. This next session was led by Chris Seidel and this is her portrait that I did but this was an interesting session too and she talked about considering what what is it that you avoid doing in your art and some of the things that I had written down was I avoid keeping things simple and as I was thinking that I started adding more decoration, these little flowers to this page here. Then what I realized is I avoid pencil crayons. Whenever the subject of pencil crayons come up, I go on about how much I don't like to do them, so use them. So I decided to make it a challenge to myself to use pencil crayons. I'm not sure that I was, I, and I did use them a lot, I'm not sure I was particularly successful with the simplicity. This next piece was led by Kaya Noyan and, he, and here's her portrait here and her session was around channeling your inner maiden and creating this shield that reflects on some of the things that you remember from your childhood, some of the things you want to hold on to, let go of, and the small steps that you can take each day. The next one here was led by Melanie Rivers, and she's a portrait artist from West Vancouver, locally here, and her session was a guided drawing of a portrait using your non-dominant hand. And I enjoyed the non-dominant hand part, and this portrait actually reminds me of myself. Oh, and before drawing, she suggested writing something on the page, and the, word, and the only thing that came to me was experiment. And then when I finished the phrase, it's an experiment, it doesn't need to be fixed, popped into my head. So I thought that that was uh, rather appropriate. This session here, led by Dominic Hurley, and here's her portrait. 
uh, was a guided visualization activity. It was an interesting process because I found it rather forced at first. But then when I got into the process, things relaxed and things, images started coming to me. And then a song, the name of the song was Wood, Stone, Feather and Bone. So I wrote down some of the lyrics, Angel singing in my soul and guiding me home. Guiding me home seems really appropriate there. The next one was Krista Forrest, and here is her portrait. And this was to make uh, some sort of a mark on a page, and I think she used watercolor, but I used pencil crayons, and create just a random mark and then find a face. And this was the face that popped out to me from my crayon marks. This is another page that I covered up with some of the rice paper with watercolor marks. This was a session led by, by Louise Gale, and it was around creating a mandala with yourself at the middle of it. And here's the mandala that I created in my other art journal. And then I went back and I did the portrait of her with some of the images that she was using in her piece. The hands making the heart in the shape of her mandala. The next session, Nicola Blakemore talked about overcoming your limiting beliefs and considering who it was or when it was in your past, who it was that convinced you you were not an artist. And this is something that I talk about in my classes as well. And then she took that one step further and she encouraged people to create a postcard. And her portrait ended up with two noses and two mouths. These two here were people who didn't have an art component to their sessions, so they just got portraits. There was Anne Young Ville, who talked about different ways to spark your creativity and become inspired. Well, it's not really the thing that I tr struggle with. I, if anything, it's the opposite. I have far too many ideas. And then P Petrina Wisdom led a session on managing your money. Krista Forrest, I've already showed you her the activity that she did, and then this crocus drawing, again in pencil crayon, relates to a session that I watched that's on the next page. And this was a session led by Camila Bricks around creating a watercolor crocus, and she was drawing from life. Another session that, which was about creating an Ayurvedic morning routine. And then there was one at the end where there was some writing which was around what are you going to let go of, what do you want to let go of, and then some intuitive collage. And the last session was led by Elizabeth who has her portrait in the front of the book with my hands on top and then I put some affirmations into my hands. And that was the end of the first set. Well, that took a lot longer than I thought it would. I guess there's going to be part two for the sketchbook revival part of my book here. So stay tuned, that'll likely be coming up next week.